Patroclus is burning somewhere over there. So I guess just enjoy week 27. <laughs> Now the morning star rose, the morning star that brings light across the whole land, and it's the yellow-dressed dawn that follows it rolling across the salt sea. And now all of the fire on the funeral pyre went out, and the flames stopped, and Achilles, Achilles laid down on one side of the pyre. He was exhausted. And sweet sleep took him. But all the men were gathered around Agamemnon, and they all decided to come to Achilles right now, and they made a lot of noise, and they were stomping their feet, so Achilles woke up right away. <laughs> and he sat up and was straight, and said to all of them, Son of Atreus, and all of you who are the best men of the Panachaean force, now, now it's time to pour the fiery wine over the fire of Patroclus' funeral pyre. Make sure the last of the flames are out. And then go and collect his white bones. It should be easy. I mean, they, they'll stand out. They're all in the middle. It's all the other horses and men that are all the way around the edge. And then take his bones and wrap them in a double fold of fat put them in a golden jar, at least until I myself can enfold him down in Hades. And then I want you to build him a burial mound. Now I don't want it to be too big, just, just right for what's now. Later, those of you Achaeans who are left beside the ships with all their many benches, those of you who are left here after me can make the mound bigger and taller. So that's what he said. And the men right away went and they listened and they poured the fiery wine so that the last of the flames went out wherever the wine hit it and heavy ash fell. And then they collected all of the white bones of their friend as they wept. And they wrapped them in double folds of fat and they put them in a golden jar. And then they put them inside Achilles' tent and covered it with fine linen. And that's when they marked out how the burial mound would work and dug up the foundation and poured all of the loose earth over. So they had built up the whole burial mound. That's when they came back to Achilles. Now Achilles would not let them go. But instead, now all of the wide people sat in assembly. And that was when <laughs> we wait for a sound cue. <laughs> <laughs> that was when he brought out the prizes for Patroclus's funeral games. <laughs> they all came from Achilles' tent. Tripods! Cauldrons! Horses! Half-asses! <laughs> of all of the prizes that were going to be for the first contest. This was the chariot racing contest. <laughs> now, let me tell you, today, for our first prize, we have a woman. <laughs> that's right. She knows all of the blameless work. And that's not all, my friends. But we also have a measures of whatever you want to put in the tripod. In second place, the prize we have for today, a cauldron. It's never touch the fire. It's shiny. It holds four measures. Ooh, that was totally not second place. <laughs> She's unbroken. <laughs> 
six years old. No, she's not. And she's pregnant with a half ass. <laughs> some order. <laughs> That's why Achilles stood up amongst them all and said, Son of Atreus and all you Achaeans now with your very nice shin guards. Now all of you know that if it was for any other man that we were now having the funeral games, I would be the one who would take home first prize. Because you all know how much more awesome my horses are than all of yours. You know they're immortal, right? It's Poseidon who gave them to Peleus, my dad, and he handed them down to me. But me and my horses, we're sitting this one out. The horses are sad right now. They're just standing over there crying because of the loss of their awesome, gentle charioteer, the one who always used to oil their manes after washing them down with the shining water. So now they stand there, drooping towards the ground, aching in their hearts, suffering. So let any one of you, our guides, now come forward, you who trust in the speed and the battle fury of your horses. That's what he said. And now, the first by far to come forward with his horses was Admetus' son, Eumelus. Or Eumelus. And let's just, he is the best by far at chariot racing. I mean, have you heard of him? I don't know. But he's awesome at chariot racing. Eumelus, here he comes. And then, the next guy to stand up was the powerful son of Hideous, Diomedes, and he's got his Trojan stallions, you know the ones that he stole from Aeneas? Everyone remember? Yeah, it was only 21 weeks ago. <laughs> and then Apollo saved Aeneas, but that was a totally different week. <laughs> and then in third, it was Vlon Menelaus, who was the son of Atreus, and his two horses were Ithi, who is a mare, and Podargus. Now, Ithi had been given to Agamemnon by Echepolis, who was Anchises' son, because he did not want to go to Windy Ilion, okay? He just wanted to stay put and have fun. It was because Zeus had made him rich, so yes, even then, rich guys bought themselves out of war. That's right. And he lived in the wide country of Sicyon, and so it was these two horses that he now placed under the yoke, and they were rearing to go. They desired the race. Now, in fourth man who got up was the shining son of Nestor, Antilochus. And his horses were from Pylos, and his dad, Nestor, was giving him good advice. And of course, Antilochus was paying close attention. So now, Nestor stood next to him and was like, Antilochus, Antilochus! Listen here, even though you are very young, Zeus and Poseidon love you, and they have already taught you so much about chariot racing. I mean, I, there's nothing left for me to teach you. You know how to take the turns tight. But, but, your horses are shit. <laughs> All of these other horses are better than your horses. I'm not saying now that they actually know more, especially when it comes to thinking things through. Because the best thing that anyone can do is to think things through. Now, thinking things through is what makes the best lumberjack, not straight. <laughs> And it's thinking things through that keeps a ship captain 
He's the one who's able to keep his ship always going straight, never, never going off course, even when the storm winds blow against and stir up the waves. And it's a charioteer who thinks things through that beats another charioteer, <laughs> even if that first charioteer is driving shitty horses. <laughs> so come now. I mean, if there's someone who is just driving carelessly and not thinking things through, his horses might just wander off the path. They might get too excited. They might go, and then he can't keep the course. But for someone who is thinking things through, he's always keeping his eye on the turning post. He always has his hands on the rein, knows when to let them out, knows when to pull them tight, knows how to follow after those who are in front of them. Yes. So now, I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to remember it. There's a turning post. It's there to stop. It's about this high off the ground. Maybe it's oak. Maybe it was a pine tree. I don't know. But it has never rotted. It's dry. <laughs> now there are two white stones on either side of it, and they mark out the flat plain around it where the crossroads come now. Who knows what this might be? Maybe it was a grave marker for a dead man. Maybe it was a turning post in a race of the first men. I don't know, but now Brilliant Fast One and Achilles has made it the turning post for this race. So, so here's what you gotta do, okay? Drive straight at the turning post. Even where it gets very narrow, keep straight on. You want to take it from the left side. So what you're doing is whipping your right horse. So that whip your right horse as fast as possible. Let the reins go on the left horse so that your whole chariot is going off to the side. So you're almost, you're almost touching one of the white stones. But don't touch the white stone. Because <laughs> that's the way that you will mess up your horses and break your chariot. Oh man, and then you, you will be such a treat to all of these other guys, and you will be a disgrace. <laughs> so make sure you don't do that. But if you keep on straight, always straight, well then you can pass up even faster horses at the turning post. And once you pass them, they won't be able to leapfrog you. They won't be able to pass you up. No, not even if it's a guy who's driving the fastest horse, brilliant Arion. And he was addressed as his horse. Or not even, not even if they're driving the horses of, of Laomedon. Oh, those are the best horses. That, okay. Whew. The best horses ever raised here. So, that's what he said. <laughs> the old man, and he went and sat down on the ground. Because he had told his son everything. Everything he needed to know. <laughs> oh, and then the, the fifth guy to roll up, it was Marion, as you know, it many as a sidekick. Now it's time to draw lots! And Achilles was shaking whatever the lots were in. <laughs> and it was Antilochus' lot that came out, so he got pole position. And then it was powerful Eumelus. And then it was spear famous Metalaeus. And then it was Marionis, Idomeneus' sidekick. And then it was Diomedes last, even though he was definitely the best of all the guys here. Just so we all know that. We're straight, right? <laughs> and so now they all were lined up and they were ready. And that's when Achilles, he set the finish line and he set 
the turning stone. And he put Phoenix there as a judge, because he knew that Phoenix would keep a good eye, that Phoenix would come back and tell him the truth of what happened. Now, all of the charioteers were ready, and they raised up their whips, and the horses ran. Now the horses were running so fast, they were flying. Now it was like, it was like when there's a squall or a huge dust storm. That's how the dust was now gathering on their horses' chest as they ran forward away from the ships now across the plain. Now the chariots were going down and up as they dipped over the earth. Now their manes were flying back with the breath of the wind as they ran. And each charioteer, he stood in the chariot and his heart was pounding because he wanted to win so bad. And so this is how the horses now flew across the plain. But it wasn't until the last leg that things really got interesting. It was when they were already coming back, back again from the sea. That's when each horse really showed its awesomeness. Now, out here in front is Eumelus' horses, right? We all knew his fast horses, they were going to do something out here. They are way out in front, flying across. But it's actually Diomedes close behind him. And I'm not talking about far. They were close, not <laughs> far. Diomedes now, it was like he was about to climb up into Eumelus' chariot with his own chariot. Okay, Diomedes, his horses are breathing down Eumelus' shoulders and back, warming it all up. That's how close. And now, Diomedes definitely would have passed him up, or at least there would have been a contest that was too close to call. Except that Phoebus Apollo, being pissed off at Diomedes, for reasons unknown, came down and just struck the whip out of his hand. So he's like, ah! And then, he started just pouring tears from his eyes because he knew that now Eumelus' horses, they were going so much faster than his. And his horses were slow because he didn't have a whip. But then, Pallas Athena, she came straight down. And she had not, not noticed Apollo messing with Diomedes. So the first thing she did was stand by the shepherd of the people Diomedes and give him back the shining whip. And then, she put all this battle fury into his horses, and then she was so mad at Eumelus, she totally went and messed him up. She broke his horse's yoke so that one horse ran off one way off the road and the other one ran off the other way off the road, and then the chariot pole just went into the ground so that the whole chariot overturned. And poor Eumelus, he went rolling, and he totally messed up his elbows and his skin and his mouth, like his whole nose is scraped up. And his whole forehead, everything above his eyebrows got all caved in. <laughs> and then the tears filled his eyes. But he held his voice in. And that was when Diomedes he just steered around Eumelus. And Athena put even more battle fury into him and gave him all the kudos, and he was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then, coming not far behind, was the horses of Menelaus. They were going fast. And so now Antilochus, who was just behind Menelaus, he said to his dad's horses. He was like, come on, you two. You've got to go faster than this, okay? Okay, look, you've got to go faster. Stretch it out. Go as fast. Okay, look, I'm not going to order you to try to catch up with Diomedes' horses, okay? Because I know that Athena right now has given them all of the kudos and the battle fury, and it's like too hard, man. Okay, but look, what you've got to do is at least catch up. Catch up with Menelaus' horses, the son of Atreus, okay? Don't get left behind. Because then, you know, Menelaus is that girl horse, the girl horse Athe, and she's totally going to just pour insults all over you, like it works like that with horses and so on. <laughs> so don't get left behind. And I'm going to tell
tell you something else right now. You know, you know Nestor, my dad, Nestor, who always takes really good care of you. Well, instead, he's gonna kill you down with the sharp bronze if he finds out that we completely lose the prize because you're not trying hard enough. <gasps> so go faster now. Just go so much faster. And we're gonna go right at the turning post, okay? I've got all the skills now, and I'm thinking it through. <laughs> and we're gonna go straight towards the turning post. Okay, we got this. <laughs> so that's what he said, and his horses were completely scared of their master yelling at them, so they went faster, at least for a little while. <laughs> and so now Antilochus saw the turning post, and so he's steering right at it, and there's a place in the road, okay, there's a place in the road where the winter rains have washed away a bunch of the road, and so here there's a bit of a dip and a ditch, and that is where Menelaus is steering right along right now, because he's trying to come off the road to avoid any kind of collision with the ditch, and Antilochus is like, <sighs> So he goes really fast right there so that they're almost next to one another and they're running alongside each other in this super narrow place. And Menelaus is like, Antilochus, you are driving very irresponsibly. <laughs> you need to hold off with your horses right now. This road is too narrow. It gets wider up ahead if you want to pass. But come on now, we're gonna have a collision. We're gonna damage our chariots. <laughs> and Antilochus, he just whipped his horses even harder. And he was like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like he had not heard at all. And so now it was like, well, the distance that a young man can throw a discus, when he really throws it like from the shoulder, that's how far these two chariots were now running side by side. And finally, Menelaus, Menelaus pulled up because he was scared. He was scared that these two chariots now were gonna crash into one another and the chariots were gonna be ruined and the men were gonna fall in the dust all because they just wanted to win but Menelaus yells out after Antilochus with huge insults. Antilochus! Oh, there is no mortal man who is more destructive than you! <laughs> now you are beating me by cheating, but you will not take home any prize without swearing an oath! That's a thing. <laughs> That's what he said. And then Menelaus turned to his own horses, and he was like, come on, you two. I know you're bummed out, but don't stand here. We've got to keep going fast. You're going to catch up with those horses because their feet and their knees are going to wear out a lot sooner than yours because those horses are old. That's what he said. And his horses were scared of him, and they listened to their master who was yelling at them, and they went faster. They flew. Now. All of the other Achaeans were sitting around. They were all sitting around watching the horse races. And it was Idomeneus, who's the leader of the Cretans. He was watching and saw things that were happening first because he was in a high spot apart from all the others. Now he heard Diomedes yelling out and he saw a horse that was out in front that really stood out because the horse was completely red except that it had a little white mark it looked like a full moon right on his forehead and he was like and he called out to all the other kids hey do you guys see this? Or is it is it only me seeing this? Huh? Oh, because it looks now, you know there were those good horses that were out in front? Yeah, when they were going that way towards the turning post, but those were Eumelus' horses, and I, I don't see them now. I think there's other horses in front. I think it's another chariot here in front. Hmm. 
Yeah. I saw those horses going that way towards the turning post, and then they, I can't see them anywhere on the whole Trojan plane coming back. I don't know what might have happened. Maybe, maybe his whip fell out of his hand, or, or maybe his chariot broke and the horses went running off the road. I mean, maybe, oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the horses just liked to run somewhere else and he couldn't hold them. What, something, something bad must have happened. <laughs> but I mean, come on, stand up. Can you, you base, take a look for yourselves, because I'm not sure, but it really seems to me right now like the guy who's out in front, um, Oh yeah, that's an Aetolian. <laughs> I, think, I think that's one of our Argive leaders. I think it's powerful Diomedes, son of Tinius. <laughs> so that's what he said. And it was fast, oily, and Ajax that answered him and was like, Man, Idomenius, you are talking shit. <laughs> Those are the same horses flying across the plains. Those have feet like air, you Milus's horses. I mean, Idomeneus, come on. We know you're not like the youngest of the Achaeans. Not like you have the sharpest eyes in your head. God, stop talking so much shit. You're talking shit. It's definitely you Milus. Milus's horses out in front. Yeah, and that's Eumelus, holding the reins. So that's what he said. <laughs> and then... <laughs> 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 and then the Lord of the Cretans answered, was like, Hey, Ajax, you're the best at insults, but you know you're the worst. And like thinking. <laughs> like, all of the other archives are better at thinking than you. <laughs> so, I don't know, let's, why don't we have a wager, a friend, friendly wager? You know, a cauldron or a tripod as a prize? You can make Agamemnon the judge, and then we'll see who's in first and who's in second. <laughs> so that's what he said, and now they started trading insults with one another, <laughs> and they were going back and forth, and now there would have been a huge fight that was bigger than anything that ever happened before, except Achilles stood up in between them, and he was like, stop it! <laughs> now, Idomeneus, stop throwing insults at Ajax. This is not right. I mean, if you guys saw somebody else behaving like this, you would be pissed, too. So just sit down and watch the horse race. Look, they're coming, they're, they're going really fast right now, so we'll all know soon enough who's in second and who's in first. So that's what Achilles said. And it was actually right then, right then, that Diomedes fast horses come speeding in. I mean, his horses are flying. Now, his whole chariot that's made of bronze with tin bands is being spattered with dust, and the charioteer himself is being spattered with dust, and his horses are breathing hard as they come in. They fly. They barely leave even trails of wheel marks in the sand. That's how they fly. And Diomedes, he pulls them up in the middle of the assembly. <laughs> and the horses are sweating. They're sweating from the back of their neck and from their shoulders. And Diomedes gets down onto the chariot and he puts his shiny whip onto the yoke. And right away his buddy Stylos goes and grabs the prizes, gets the tripod and the woman, and gives it to his buddies to take back to their tent. Oh, and there's Antilochus! Now, Antilochus is coming up next because, not because of speed, right, but because he cheated. 
<laughs> he's passed up Menelaus, and here he comes. And Menelaus is coming right behind him, though. Now, the distance between them, it's like the distance of when there's a horse that really, really wants to stretch out and pull its master's chariot as fast as it can. And so its tail is flying out backwards so that the very tippy, tippy tops of the tail hairs are touching against the chariot wheels. That's how close that Metalagus and Antilochus are in the finish, even though they started, it was a whole discus throw apart. But Menelaus' horses, well, that mare I think she got a sudden burst of Manos and they caught up fast with Antilochus' horses. Now, if the course would have been just a little bit longer, Menelaus definitely would have won. Or at least it would have been really close. It was already pretty close. But Antilochus won. And then it was Menelaus. And then it was Meriones, because he was just, he, he had the shittiest horses, and he was just, to be frank, the shittiest chariot. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, here comes Eumelus. Aww. He's dragging his broken chariot. His horses are walking out in front of him. And Achilles sees him and he pities him so much that he was the best charioteer ever coming in last. And so he says, Now the last place goes to the best man. Ah, oh, we have to give a prize to you, Milis. I think we should give him second prize. That's, that seems right to me. And then Diomedes, the son of Tidius, can take first. So that's what he said. And everybody approved now. So he went to go give him the horse, because we all remember the horse was second prize. Right? Yeah, we do now. Except that Antilochus, <laughs> Got some Antilochus fans in the house. <laughs> Antilochus spoke out, and he was like, Achilles, man, I'm going to be so mad if you do what you just said you were going to do. I mean, okay, this guy's horses got all messed up, and he came in last, and you feel bad for him because he's awesome, but you know, he should have just prayed to the gods. Okay, first, and then he wouldn't have come in last. And if you feel so bad for him and you love him so much, you should give him something from your tent. I mean, you've got stuff in there, like you've got bronze and gold and animals and slave women and tripods. <laughs> <laughs> and you can give it to him now, or you can give it to him later, okay? I don't care, but I think the Achaeans will actually approve of that. But this horse? I'm not giving up this horse, my second prize, okay? And if there's anyone that wants to try to take it from me, I will fight them with my hands! <laughs> So that's what he said, and Achilles is just smiling because he loves this guy Antilochus. <laughs> <laughs> so he says to him, Antilochus, <laughs> you know, if you really want me to give Eumelus something from my tent, I will, I will definitely do that. Um, <laughs> I've got this great breastplate from Master Pius. It's bronze, but it's got really nice tin bands. I think you know this will really like it. I think it's worthy. So that's what he said. And he sent Automedon off now to go to his tent to get the breastplate. And he went and he brought it back. And Achilles handed it over to Eumelus. And Eumelus was so happy to get his prize. But now, there's Menelaus. Menelaus, the son of Atreus, he now takes the herald's staff away and he silences all of the Argives. And he comes out. Antilochus, 
You know, they always called you wise, but now you go and do something like this. You won by cheating. Now, I think it's something to do with, I don't know, how young you are. I don't know. But I think that all of the archives here should stand in judgment of us now, between me and Antilochus, so that none of you can say that Menelaus, with force or with lies, took away Antilochus's horse. Or better yet, I myself will stand as the judge, and not one of the Achaeans will be able to argue against it because I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> So Antilochus, what I want you to do is I want you to go to this horse and I want you to swear. I want you to swear to Poseidon, the earth-shaking, earth-encircler, that you beat me fairly and didn't cheat. That's what he said. And Nestor's son Antilochus was like, Okay, hold on, okay. Um, you know Menelaus, Lord, Lord Menelaus, you're a lot older than me, and wiser, and uh, I'm a lot younger, and you're better. You know, young men can just get ahead of themselves sometimes, you know? Like their mind is quick, but they're not good at thinking things through. So, um, I'm going to give you the horse that I won uh, <laughs> because the last thing I want is all of my days to fall out of your heart and for the gods to think that I'm some kind of scoundrel. So that's what he said. And now Menelaus was so softened in his heart. <laughs> Do you know how his heart was softened? Menelaus, your heart was softened like when, when the dew comes on the corn in the fields of crop on the shaking earth and softens the corn. <laughs> That's how your heart was softened, Menelaus. And so Menelaus, the son of Atreus, he said, well, Antilochus, you know, it's only because you weren't much of an asshole before <laughs> that now, as angry as I am, I think I will, I will concede. You know, it's only this one time that your youth has beaten down your wits. But let this be a lesson that you never try to cheat your betters again, and I want you to know that there's no other man of the Argives here who would persuade me so quickly, except that you, Antilochus, you and your good father and your brother, all of you have gone through so much and fought so hard for my sake. So now I will give up the horse, <laughs> even though she's mine, so that all of these men here can know that my heart is not arrogant and is not stubborn. That's what he said. And he handed over the horse to Noemon, who is Antilochus's buddy, and they took it out. And then Menelaus, he, he took the cauldron. That's his prize. And then Marionis, he got four, so he got the two talents of gold. It's actually pretty good for me. They should have tried it. And then there was one prize left. The two-handled bowl fifth place. And so Achilles, he crossed over to the assembly where Nestor was. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave the bowl to Nestor. And he said to him, Nestor, you know, I think that you should have this bowl because I want you to always remember Patroclus and Patroclus' funeral games because he will never again be seen among the Argives <coughs> and you, well, I'm going to give you this because you can't, you can't box, you can't wrestle, 
you can't go into the javelin throwing contest. Definitely not going to go into the foot race. I mean, old age has beaten you. <laughs> and Nestor, the son of Nelius, took the bowl in his hands and he was so delighted and he was like, Achilles, everything you've said is true. <laughs> These limbs of mine are just steadfast and strong as they used to be. But you know, they were steadfast when I was young. <laughs> if only I had the strength now that I did back when the Apeans buried Emerichius <laughs> at Buprasion. Now those were some beautiful games. <laughs> And at those funeral games, there wasn't any man who could beat me. Not the Apeans, not the Pylians, not the Aetolians. I beat them all. I beat, in the boxing, Clytomenes, who was Panops' son. And in the wrestling, I beat um, Caius. And I even had a mnemonic device for that, and I forgot it. <laughs> and in the spear throw, I beat Phileas and Polydorus. And in the foot race, I beat Mighty Ephaclus. So, the horse race was won by the two sons of Actor. <laughs> Okay, but you know, the two sons of Actor, they went really fast because they really wanted the prize because it was the best prize of all the prizes. I mean, they were twins. There was one of them that was just like a really good charioteer. He was such a good charioteer, and the other one was whipping the horses. And... <laughs> <laughs> but now, now all these contests are for younger men. And I am old. So you now, you play in these games, and you honor your dead friend, Patroclus. But I will take this cup, bowl, <laughs> and uh, remember. And I'm just so delighted that you remembered me like this and gave me the honor that I deserve. <laughs> with much favor. <laughs> so that's what he said. And when Achilles had heard all of the praise and stuff from Nestor, then among all the Achaeans, he laid out the prizes for the painful boxing. <laughs> now, for the winner, what we've got today is a horse. Nope. <laughs> because she's a half ass. <laughs> six years old. <laughs> a six year old hard working half ass. <laughs> Unbroken. And for the loser, a cup with two handles. <laughs> And now Achilles stood amongst all the Achaeans, and he is like, Now, you son of Atreus and all of you Achaeans with your nice shin guards, let two men come forward who are the best, the best at boxing, the best at throwing their fists and hitting one another. <laughs> and whoever Apollo gives the glory to, well, we'll see soon enough, and he will take home this half-ass who is unbroken and six years old, and the loser will get a cup. Two handles. <laughs> That's what he said. And the first guy to get up by far was this guy, Apeus, who was Panops' son. He was big, and he was strong, and man, did he know how to box. And he walked right across, and he placed his hand on the half-ass 
and he shouted out to all of the Argives, Let the man now come who's going to take home the cup! Because <laughs> no one is taking this half ass away from me, not by beating me at the boxing, because I'm the best at boxing! <laughs> I might be shit on the battlefield, but hey, <laughs> we can't all be good at everything. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, brother. I will tell you something, and it will happen. I will guarantee that whoever stands against me, I'm going to break their skin and smite their bones with my fists. And then, all his buddies who care about him, they're gonna have to drag him off. Cause he'll be beaten down by my hands. <laughs> That's what he said. And everybody was just stricken to silence. <laughs> of Talaios, and Talaios, you know, they beat all of the Thebans when they had the funeral games for the fallen Oedipus. So now he comes, and Diabetes, who's the powerful son of Tidius, is his second, he's encouraging with his words, and he gets on his belt, and they're both getting ready, and now these two guys, they throw, they throw against one another, and they're both just hitting each other with their hands, and now their teeth are gnashing, and they're sweating from all their limbs all over, and... And then Apeus, Apeus is like, <sighs> and he just hits Euryalus in the cheek. He hits him so hard that he completely loosens his limbs and lifts him off the ground. So now it's like when there's a huge wave of the ocean that just throws a fish down into the seaweed, and then all the black water covers it. Yeah. That's how Euryalus went down! And then Apeus just lifted him up again. And all of his buddies gathered around, and they took him off. Now he was dragging his feet. He was out of his mind. He clearly has a concussion. He's spitting out blood. His head's kind of dragging off to one side, and his buddies also grab the cup. <laughs> Two handles. <laughs> and that was when Peleus' son Achilles laid out the prizes for the third contest, <laughs> the painful wrestling for our first prize. Tonight we've got a tripod! <laughs> now this is the kind of tripod you can put over the fire and the Achaeans value it at 12 oxen! And for the loser, we've got a woman! <laughs> she knows how to do all kinds of things! And they value her at 4 oxen! <laughs> And first of all, it was big, strong, Telemonian Ajax! I'm an Ajax! I'm the baddest motherfucker! <laughs> I'm the wall of the Achaeans! I'm the biggest, baddest warrior! And that tripod is mine! <laughs> We 
bring with each other their backs were screaming with pain and the effort of it, and the welts started to rise up on their sides and on their shoulders. And now, Odysseus couldn't handle Ajax, and Ajax couldn't handle Odysseus. And so now, finally, Biggs, all the kids are starting to get antsy. Who's helping me with my half-assed? 